Once upon a time in the early 1900s, Captain Dimitrios Kantos and his team of sponge divers from Simi Island embarked on a risky expedition to search for lost treasures off the coast of Greece. Little did they know, they were about to discover one of the most significant archaeological finds in history. During their expedition, the team stumbled upon the Antikythera shipwreck, a Roman cargo ship that had sunk to the depths of the ocean floor. The ship had been lost for centuries, but it held a wealth of precious artifacts waiting to be discovered. With the help of the Hellenic Royal Navy, the crew retrieved numerous items from the wreckage, including bronze and marble statues, pottery, unique glassware, jewelry, coins, and most notably, the Antikythera mechanism. The mechanism was a mysterious device made of corroded bronze and wood, and its purpose was unknown. It had been on board the cargo ship, but nobody knew how it came to be there. All of the artifacts were taken to the National Museum of Archaeology in Athens for storage and analysis. However, the mechanism went unnoticed for two years as museum staff worked on piecing together the more obvious treasures. The mechanism underwent deformational changes because it was not treated after being removed from the seawater. The Discovery In 1902, an archaeologist named Valero Stays was examining a collection of artifacts when he made a remarkable discovery. One of the artifacts had a gear wheel embedded in it. Stais was amazed by what he saw and initially believed that it was an astronomical clock. However, most scholars at the time were skeptical of Stais' claims. They believed that the device was too complex to have been constructed during the same period as the other pieces that had been discovered. As a result, investigations into the object were dropped and it was largely forgotten for several decades. It wasn't until 1951 that the device caught the attention of British science historian and Yale University professor Derek J. DeSola Price. Price was intrigued by the device and began studying it in detail. In 1971, Price and Greek nuclear physicist Karlampos Karakalos made X-ray and gamma-ray images of the 82 fragments that made up the device. They analyzed their findings and published a 70-page paper on the object's complex design and function. In 1974, the paper provided a detailed explanation of how the device worked, showing that it was not an astronomical clock, but rather an ancient Greek analog computer. The device, now known as the Antikythera mechanism, was capable of predicting astronomical positions and eclipses for calendrical and astrological purposes. Its origin. Scholars agree that the Antikythera mechanism, the world's first known analog computer, was a marvel of ancient engineering. The mechanism was built between 60 to 70 BC and relied on astronomy and mathematical theories. A team of British and Greek researchers confirmed that it was developed by the great mathematician Archimedes. In 2008, the Antikythera Mechanism Research Project presented a theory that the origins of the mechanism may have come from Corinthian colonies, which were renowned for their advanced scientific knowledge. Syracuse, a colony of Corinth, and the birthplace of Archimedes was also considered a possible origin for the device. However, it was later shown in 2017 that the calendar on the metonic spiral matched the Corinthian type, but not that of Syracuse. Another theory proposed that the mechanism may have originated from Pergamum, an ancient Greek city that was home to the Library of Pergamum, which was second only to the Library of Alexandria. The discovery of vases in the Rhodian style on the ship carrying the mechanism led to a hypothesis that it may have been constructed on the island of Rhodes, a bustling trading port and center of astronomy and mechanical engineering. The mechanism utilized Hipparchus' theory of the motion of the moon, leading to the possibility that he may have designed or contributed to its creation. Recent studies have suggested a new dating of around 200 BC based on the identification of the startup date on the Saros dial. It was supposed that the prototype for the mechanism was from Rhodes, but that this specific model was modified for a client from Epirus in northwestern Greece. Additional investigations were conducted in 2014 and 2015 in the hopes of uncovering more information about the mechanism. A five-year program of research began in 2014 and concluded in October 2019, with a new five-year session commencing in May 2020. Despite decades of research, the true purpose and origins of the Antikythera mechanism remain a mystery. The Antikythera mechanism has parts such as the major fragment, front face, rear face, doors, and gears. The major fragment. 
The most significant part of the device was the main fragment, which contained the majority of the known mechanism. The fragment was about 30 millimeters thick at its thickest point, and on the front of it, there was a large B1 gear, which was impossible to miss. Upon closer inspection, more gears, parts of the L, M, C, and D trains were visible behind it. Front face. The front dial of the Antikythera mechanism consists of two circular scales, one inside the other. The inner scale is marked with the Greek signs of the zodiac, divided into degrees. The outer scale is a movable ring that sits flush with the surface and is marked off with what appears to be days, with corresponding holes beneath the ring in the channel. There are two theories regarding the function of the outer ring. The first is that it represents the 365-day Egyptian calendar, but recent research suggests that it is more likely divided into 354 intervals. If the 365-day theory is correct, the mechanism would predate the Julian calendar reform, but the Sothic and Calypic cycles had already pointed to a 365 and a quarter day solar year. The dials are not believed to reflect Ptolemy III's proposed leap day, but the outer calendar dial may be moved against the inner dial to compensate for the extra quarter day in the solar year by turning the scale backward one day every four years. The second theory is that the outer ring represents a manifestation of a 354-day lunar calendar, which would make the Antikythera mechanism possibly the first example of the Egyptian civil-based lunar calendar. The lunar calendar was used as a day-to-day -day indicator of successive lunations, and also assisted with the interpretation of the lunar phase pointer and the metonic and saros dials. The front dial also marks the position of the sun on the ecliptic and corresponds to the current date in the year. The orbits of the moon and the five planets known to the Greeks are also close enough to the ecliptic to make it a convenient reference for defining their positions. Rear face. The Antikythera mechanism's rear face has five dials, including the metonic dial and the saros dial, and three smaller indicators. Recent findings reveal that it not only tracked the Mitonic calendar and predicted solar eclipses, but also calculated the timing of several Pan-Hellenic athletic games, including the ancient Olympic Games. The Mitonic dial covers 235 months in five rotations, and the games dial is divided into four sectors, each inscribed with a year indicator and the name of two Pan-Hellenic games. The inscriptions on each division of the games dial closely match the names of the months used on calendars from Epirus in northwestern Greece, suggesting that the calendar on the Antikythera mechanism is likely to be the Epirote calendar. Doors. The wooden casing of the mechanism features inscriptions on both its front and back doors, with the latter appearing to serve as an instruction manual. One of its fragments bears the inscriptions, 76 years, 19 years which correspond to the Calypic and Metonic cycles, while 223 is written to represent the Saros cycle. Another fragment refers to the Metonic dial and includes the inscription on the spiral subdivisions 235. Gears. The Antikythera mechanism has at least 30 gears, used to position astronomical bodies in reference to the observer's position on Earth. It includes gearing for the Calypic, Metonic, and Saros cycles, and may have indicators for all five planets known to the Greeks. The gear teeth were equilateral triangles with an average circular pitch of 1.6 millimeters created using hand tools. The device has been replicated accurately, and experts suggest that the Greeks were capable of implementing a system with many more gears. However, the major unknown remains the question of the presence and nature of any planet indicators. Working Principle To operate the device, the operator had to rotate the Egyptian calendar ring to align with the current zodiac points. The Egyptian calendar did not account for leap days, so it progressed through a full zodiac sign in approximately 120 years. The mechanism was powered by turning a small hand crank, which is now missing, linked via crown gear to the largest gear, the four-spoked gear visible on the front of fragment A, gear B1. This movement caused the date pointer on the front dial to move which would be set to the correct Egyptian calendar day. Since the year was not selectable, the operator had to know the current year or refer to the cycles indicated by various calendar cycle indicators on the back in the Babylonian ephemeris tables for the day of the year that was currently set. The crank moved the date pointer about 78 days per full rotation, making it easy to hit a particular day on the dial if the mechanism was in good working order. When the operator turned the hand crank, all gears within the mechanism would move, resulting in the calculation of various astronomical positions 
such as the position of the sun and moon, the moon phase, eclipse, and calendar cycles. It is possible that the device also indicated the locations of planets. The operator had to be mindful of the spiral dial pointers on the two large dials on the back. The pointer had a follower that tracked the spiral incisions in the metal. As the dials completed four to five full rotations, the pointer reached the terminal month location at either end of the spiral, and the follower had to be manually shifted to the other end of the spiral before proceeding further. Reconstruction Efforts Scientists have been trying to reconstruct the mechanism of a Greek device to unlock its secrets, but have faced challenges due to lack of evidence and the nature of the front part of the mechanism. Different proposals have been made, including Michael Wright's model with a potential planetarium system, Evans, Carmen, and Thorndike's proposal based on irregular spacing of inscriptions, and Freeth and Jones' solution for a planetary indication with a system similar to Wright's proposal. The inferior and superior planet mechanisms have been described, each with epicyclic gears and object pointers. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and share the video.